Shalakia. Shalom, Shalom, Kahalayam La, Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shah, Bahashem, Rakakudash, Step of Honor to the Apostles and the Elders of Great Millstone, that rule in T12. Must peace, love, and salutations to all the brothers that's doing this work in truth and sincerity. Shalom, this is the Brother Patat back again with another lesson. Lord willing, it be edifying. Um, in this lesson, I'm going to point out some similarities between the book of Joshua and the coming of our Lord Yahweh Shai, which when you look up the word Joshua, it also means in the Hebrew, Yahweh Shai, which Joshua's name used to be Oshia, which means uh, Hawashai. Um, but his name was changed to Yahweh Shai. And I'm going um, to look that up too, also, real quick. So I just wanted to point out some similarities between the book of Joshua and the coming of our Lord Yahweh Shai. So without further ado, we're going to get right into to it. So let's look up the word conquest real quick because the word conquest, it means in the early 14th century, the defeat of an adversary. Because we know that when Joshua was leading the children of Israel into the land, the land that the Lord was going to cause Israel to inherit, they literally had to defeat the enemies, the, the people that live on that land. They had to defeat the adversary in order to take that land because they was not just going to give it to us, you know? So it says subjugating by or conquering by an armed force. So that's what the Lord caused the in Joshua and the Israelites to do in the book of Joshua. They took the, the land by force. You know, they took the city of Jericho. They took other little small cities. They destroyed those heathens. The Amorites, the you know the the all the ites, you know which Canaanites, they destroyed all of those Canaanite nations that was living in the in the land of Israel, you know, and also the Amorite, yeah, which I believe if I'm not mistaken are Canaanites. So those Canaanite nations that was dwelling in that land, the Lord caused the nation of Israel, started with Joshua, and the Israelites and the men of war to destroy them, to kill them, to destroy them. So they conquered, literally conquered that land. And so I just wanted to compare to how Yahweh Shai is going to return because he's coming to conquer. Like the scriptures tells you in the book of Revelation chapter 6 verse 1. So we're going to get that right into it, but let's get, get some more definitions. And we're also going to get the word conquer. It says subjugating or conquering by armed force. Armed force acquisition. Let's look up that word. It says an act of obtaining because what? The land belongs to us. Purchase, acquirement. We're acquiring the land, but we're taking it by force. That's exactly how our Lord Yahweh Shai is coming. He's coming to bring, he's taking the kingdom by force, you know, to seek, to obtain. So we're going to, just like Joshua, in the book of Joshua, they obtained the land because they killed all of those nations that they destroyed all of those nations that was living on the land in order for them to take it. You know, so it was a conquest. Conquest, acquisition, blah, blah, blah. This is, see. It says to search for, procure for by effort. So um, let's look up the word conquer. The word conquer, to achieve a task. Conquer, defeat, vanquish. What? Defeat the enemy. Vanquish the what? The enemies. The vanquish the ones that's living. On the land to search for, procure by win. We're winning the land. We're winning to win. The word conquer means to win. To seek in for search from 13th century as to win, defeat an adversary, overcome, subdue, make a conquest, be victorious, win, or secure something. So, Yahweh Shai, in these times that we're living in, he is going to. To um uh, to acquire by force of of arms, so he's gonna acquire the world. He's coming to take it, you know. He's coming to take the rulership. It's lucky that was my little list of things I need to get. It's lucky, but um. So Yahweh Shai is going to take um. Let's get the real quick Daniel book of Daniel chapter seven. I'm going to start at verse 13. So we know, you know, at first, you know, let's give a, a quick example in the book of Joshua. Because the scripture says what? The things that are written aforetime were written for our learning. So we're going to compare this 
the book of Joshua to, you know, certain examples of the book of Joshua and how he had to conquer the land to how Yahweh Shai is going to conquer in the times that we're living in now. Okay, so let's read this, Joshua 11 and 9, 19. It says, there was, there was not a city that made peace with the children of Israel. So they didn't make peace with Israel when they was um, coming into the land. Hold on. I'm going to start at, hold on. Joshua 11 and 12. It says, And all the cities of those kings and all the kings of them did Joshua take and smote them with the edge of the sword. And he utterly destroyed them as Moses, the servant of the Yahweh commanded. But as for the cities that stood in their, in their strength, Israel burned none of them, save Hazar only that, that did Joshua burn. And all the spoils of these cities and all the and the cattle and the children of Israel took for a prey unto themselves, but every man they smote with the edge of the sword until they had destroyed them. Neither left they any to breathe, as Yahweh as Yahweh commanded Moses, his servant. So did Moses command Joshua, and so did Joshua. He left nothing undone of all the thing all that Yahweh commanded Moses. So Joshua took all the land, the hills, and all the south country, and all the land of Goshen, and the valley, and the plain, and the mountain of Israel, and the valley of the same, even from the Mount Halak that goeth up to Seir, even unto Baal God, to the valley of Lebanon, unto under Mount Hermon, and all the kings he took and smoked them and slew them. Joshua made war a long time with all these kings. There was not a city that made peace with the children of Israel, save the Hittite, the Hivites, the inhabitants of Gibeon. All others they took in battle, for it was of Yahweh to harden their hearts that they should come against Israel in battle, that he might destroy them utterly, and that they might have no favor, but they that he might destroy them as Yahweh commanded Moses. And at that time came Joshua and cut off the Anakims from the mountains, from Hebron, from Bebar, I'm sorry, Bebar, Debrar, from Anab, and from all the mountains of Judah, and from all the mountains of Israel. Joshua destroyed them utterly with their cities. There was none of the Anakims left in the land of Judah of the children of Israel only in Gaza in Gath and in Ashtar there remained so Joshua took the whole land according to all that Yahweh said unto Moses and Joshua gave it for inheritance unto Israel according to the divisions by the tribes and the land rested from war so as you can see um, the Lord caused Israel to fight with all these nations this is the book of Joshua 1 chapter 9 verse 1 and it came to pass when all the kings which were on this side of Jordan this side Jordan in the hills and in the valleys and in all the coasts of the great city over against Lebanon the Hittite and the Amorite and the Canaanite and the Perizzite and the Hivite and the Jebusite heard thereof that they gathered themselves together to fight with Joshua and with Israel with one accord and when the inhabitants of Gibeon heard what Joshua had done unto Jericho and unto all, I, they did not, they did work willingly and went and made as if they had been ambassadors and took old socks upon their asses and wine bottles, old and rent and bound up. So they, they, they was the only ones that made peace with the Israelites. You know, that's what it's going to get into. The Gibeonites, they was the only ones that made peace with Israel. But everybody, everybody else fought against Israel you know so we're going to compare that to what is going to happen in the times that we're living in now because right now Esau and the other nations are on the one accord like the scripture says just same the way that those other nations was on one accord to fight against Israel the scriptures speak about how these these Edomites and these other nations are going to come to one accord to fight against Yahweh Shai 
when he returns. So let's get that real quick. Let's prove that because the scripture says, prove all things, hold fast that which is good. So they are going to fight. All the nations are going to put them, their differences aside um, and fight against your house. Even Ronald Reagan said that, you know, it would take an outer, uh, 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 a, a threat from outer space and all the nations will put their differences aside to fight against them. They show you that in the movie Independ Independence Day, you know? Them becoming one, joining together to fight against Yahweh Shai and the angels. So this is what's going to actually happen. This is 2nd Edges chapter 13. I'm going to get straight to the point. Hold on. Here it is. This is 2nd uh, Edges 13 and 5. It says... And after this, I beheld, because when Yahweh Shah is going to appear, and these heathens, they're going to gather together to fight against them on one accord. There was gathered together a great mul a multitude of men out of number from the four winds of the heaven to subdue the men that came out of the sea, which came out of the what? The heavens, you know, came from outer space. Yahweh Shah, that's where it's going to come from, you know. But I beheld, and lo, he had graven himself a great mountain and flew upon it, flew up upon it. So... The Lord Yahweh Shai is gonna He's gonna crack those clouds and he's gonna manifest himself and he's gonna return in so-called UFOs. And all the nations that are down here on the earth that are fighting against each other, they are gonna come together as one on one accord to fight against Yahweh Shai. But I beheld and lo that he gave himself a great mountain, which that mountain represents a very big chariot, a very, very, very large chariot, and flew up upon it. And what I and I would have seen the region or the place where where out the hill was graven, and I could not. And after this, I beheld and lo, all they which they which were gathered together to subdue him were sore afraid, and yet there's fright. And lo, as he saw the violence of the multitude that came, he neither lifted up his hand nor lifted up sword nor any instrument of war, but only I saw that that he sent out of his mouth, which is what out of that chariot. Because Yahweh Shah is going to return in a big chariot. And he's not going to get out here, get out of the chariot and start fighting with these devils. No. What he's going to do is he is going to shoot laser beams, concentrated beams of fire out of that chariot. They show you in the movie Independence Day. They show you in the movie War of the Worlds. The first one and the second one. It says, as it had been a blast of fire and out of his lips a flaming breath and out of his tongue he cast out sparks and tempests. So just, just like in the book of Joshua, all the nations was one in accord against the against the Israelites. All the nations in this time are gonna be one accord against Yahweh Shah, which they already in one accord. Certain other nations are in one accord with each other. Um when it comes to Esau. You know his NATO allies still have the visions, but they, for the most part, they in one accord. This is uh, Psalms 83 and 1. Keep not thou silence, O power; hold not thy peace, and be not still, O power. For lo, thy enemies make a tumult, and they that hate thee have lifted up the head. Because these nations they're confederate against the Israelites. They are together against us. They have taken crafty counsel against thy people, and consulted against thy hidden ones. They have said, let us come up, let us cut them off from being a nation that the name of Yahshua Allah may no more remembrance. Be no, may be no more in remembrance, for they have consulted together with oneness consent. They are confederate against thee. The tabernacles of Edom and the Ishmaelites of Moab and the Hagarines, Gebal and Ammon and Amalek, the Philistines with the inhabitants of Tyre, Ashur also is joined with them. They have hope in the children of Lot. So, Lot. so all of these nations, they have alliances, you know, and they're aligned. They're aligned. They're aligned together against the nation Israel, you know, on lower levels. They're confederate against us, you know. Um, but for the sake of this lesson, we're referring to how Yahweh Shai, these nations are gonna come together against him to try to destroy Yahweh Shai and the angels. So let's get that real quick in the book of Revelations. I got it in the book of Second Edges. Sec, um, Revelation chapter 12, verse 12, 7. It says, and there was war in heaven. Because remember, when the Lord returns, these nations, Esau, is going to try to fight against Yahweh Shai. 
and they're going to lose. The scripture said they're going to lose. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, which is the Roman Empire. Today, the modern, the um, second leg of the Roman Empire, which is America, the beast, you know, with seven heads, ten arms, you know, that's the same system, the same Roman system. Um, America follows the same system of the Roman Empire, man, or the first Roman Empire. That's why you have Latin, you know, all throughout Babylon, even on the back of the dollar bill. And even when, in, you know, in the law, you have to learn Latin and things certain certain Latin terms because America is the second leg of the Roman Empire or the dragon, if you will. You know, it's an extension of that the Roman Empire and the dragon fought in his angels. Because so remember, Esau and his armies is going to fight against the Lord and the Lord and the angels and they're going to lose. But and prevailed not. Neither was their place found anymore in heaven. So. They're going to fight against your house shiny angels, but they're going to lose. They're going to lose, man. So this is just one of the similarities that I want to focus on. Let's go to the book of Revelations, chapter six. Because remember, I will what our Lord is coming to do. The scripture is going to tell you Revelation six and one. It says, and I saw and I saw hit. I'm sorry. And I saw when the lamb opened the, one of the seals and I heard as it were a noise of thunder. One of the four beasts saying, come and see. And I saw, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat upon sat, sat on him had a bow, and a crown was given unto him, and he went forth conquering and to conquer. So let's let's go to the um. I'm sorry. Revelation six and one. Let's look. Revelation six and one. read that again revelation 6 and 1 it says and i saw when that lamb opened one of the seals and i heard and as and i and i heard as it were the noise of the of thunder one of the four be saying come and see and i saw and and behold a white horse now that is talk, not talking about a literal white horse white words represents purity horses represents power so that one that's coming in pure power is Yahweh Shah. He's coming in a so-called UFO because those UFOs are very powerful. It says, and he that sat on him had a bow. It's a bow, arrow, they're synonymous with each other. You know, a sword, because the Lord is ultimately coming with a sword. Like the scripture says, I am come to bring a sword. It says, and a crown was given unto him and he went forth conquering and to conquer. Now there is a precept that refers to Yahweh Shai coming with an arrow, I believe. It's basically saying the same thing. Psalm 45. Let me see that real quick. Let me see. Here it is. This is Psalms 45. And I'm going to start at verse 3. Hold on. Let me see. Let me grab my Bible real quick. Bear with me. Because I want to read the title. Because it's, I have the red Bible. And it tells you what the, the title of uh, this paragraph, this psalm is, psalm is saying. Let's read that real quick. Let's see what it says. I know it's referring to Yahweh Shai, but let's get that, prove that real quick. Psalm 45. All right, Psalm 45, it says, Majesty and grace of Hamashiach's kingdom. So, of course, it's talking about the Lord Yahweh Shai. So, Psalms 45 and 1, it says, My heart is indicting a good matter. I speak of the things which I have made touching the king. My tongue is the pen of a ready writer. Thou art fairer than the children of men. Grace is poured into thy lips, therefore the Most High hath blessed thee forever. And remember, this is talking about Yahweh Shai. Gird thy sword upon thy thigh, O Most Mighty, with thy glory and thy majesty. Because remember, the Lord is coming in the glory of His Father, like the Scripture says. He's coming to bring a sword. He's coming to bring judgment. He's coming to establish the nation of Israel. He's coming to fight against the nations. He's going to make war. The Scripture says it's going to be war in heaven. I am come to bring a sword. What will I fire already? Be? Well, I have come to bring fire on the earth. How you think the fire is going to come? It's going to come by them chariots. 
You know, one way of that fire is going to come. Verse 4, and in thy majesty ride prosperously because of truth and meekness and righteousness. And thy right hand shall teach thee terrible things because the Lord is, Yahweh Shai is coming to terrorize. Ultimately, he's going to take down these nations, man. He's taking them all down. Thine arrows, remember it says in Revelation 6, thy bow, bow and arrow are synonymous with each other. Thine arrows are sharp in the hearts of the king's enemies, whereby the people fall under thee. Thy throne or power is forever and ever. The scepter of thy kingdom is a right scepter. So the Lord Yahweh Shah is coming to establish this, man. He is going to bring that, that um, destruction upon Babylon, you know, with the sword. Revelation 6 and 2. And I saw and behold a white horse, which is talking about the chariots, pure power. And he that sat on it had a bow. And a crown was given unto him. And he went forth conquering and to conquer. So the Lord is going to come and to destroy Babylon and Esau. It's old infrastructure. Old infrastructure. Let's read a um, Greek word. Strong. Strong's G 3528. Nikao. 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 It means to carry. I'm sorry, to conquer, to carry off the victory, come off victorious of Hamashiach, victory over his foes. Exactly. The Lord is going to get victory over his enemies. So, Yahweh is going to get victory. He's going to win. Esau is going to lose. Yahweh is going to win, man. Let's see what that word bow means real quick. I'm pretty sure it means a bow. Yeah, it says a bow. Says a bow. Okay. Let's go back. So the Lord is bringing judgment. Ultimately, He's bringing a sword. He's bringing a bow. He's bringing an arrow. He's uh, He's bringing a weapon of war. That's what He's bringing. You know, He's bringing war to these devils. All right. So let's get some real quick. Daniel chapter seven. Daniel 7 and 13 it says And I saw in a night visions And behold one like the son of man Coming with the clouds of heaven That's like it says in the book of Revelation Chapter 7 verse I mean chapter 1 verse 7 The Lord Yahweh is going to come with the UFOs It says and, the, and came to the ancient of days And they brought him near before him And there was given him dominion And glory in the kingdom That all people, nations and languages Should serve him His dominion is an everlasting dominion, dominion which shall not pass away in his kingdom that which shall not be destroyed. So the Shai is going to have an everlasting kingdom. You know, an everlasting kingdom that's not going to be destroyed. So let's jump down to verse 18. It says, But the saints of the Most High shall take the kingdom and possess the kingdom forever and ever. Even forever and ever. So Yahweh Shai is going to be the one that spearheads this. He's the one that's going to bring it. He's going to bring these devils down, man. You know? So, where the, the prophecies speak all, all the time about Yahweh Shai coming against these nations that are dwelling. This is the book of Revelation 11, and, I'm sorry, 19 and 11. And I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse. That's the same thing it says in Revelation chapter 6, which represents pure power, the chariots, the UFOs. And he that sat upon him was called faithful and true. And in his and in righteousness he doth judge and make war. That's what Yahweh Shah coming to do. He's coming to make war against these devils, man. His eye, just like in the book of Joshua, there was Joshua, which, which his name is Yahweh Shah. It used to be Hawashai. Uh um, but his name turned to change to Yahweh Shai. You know, so Yahweh Shai, is our Lord, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, is coming to make war against Esau and these other nations. He's coming to dethrone them. His eyes were as a flame of fire, and he, on his head were many crowns. Because what is he doing? He's conquering. He's conquering to conquer. He's taking these nations down, and he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. And he was clothed with a vexure dipped in blood, and his name was called the Word of God. The army, the vexure, he's, 
Yahweh yeah, Shah is going to shed a lot of blood, you know, when he returns. That's um, um, symbolic for all the blood that he's going to actually do when he returns. In the word of God, that lets you know who it's talking about. Yahweh Shah is the word of God. It says that in John 1, 1, 1 and 1. And the armies which were in, were in the heavens, heaven followed him upon white horses. So not only is Yahweh Shai coming in the chariots, the angels are coming in chariots too. It's going to be a war, you know, clothed in fine linen, white and clean, which is talking about the chariots. They're going to be, they're going to be coming in the chariots. And out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword that with it he might smite the nations. That's the same thing that Joshua did to the, um, the, the heathen nations or them Canaanite nations that were dwelling on the land. You know, you see, he was smiting those nations, man. And Yahweh is coming to do the same. It says that with it, that short sword with those laser beams from the chariots, he's coming to kill them. Smite the nations. He's coming to kill the nations. And he shall rule them with a rod of iron. That's a literal rod. Because we got to kill them and establish order. For, we got to establish the kingdom. We got to destroy all of these devils, man. There's going to be a remnant, you know, that's going to be hard off into slavery, you know. But for the most part, the Lord, Yahweh Shai, is going to destroy America along with the missiles. It says, he treadeth the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of the almighty power. So Yahweh Shai is not coming. You know, it's not going to be... Um, a good uh, a good day man it's gonna be a horrible day the lord is coming to kill a lot of people man and he has on his vexture and on his thigh a name written king of kings and lord of lords and i saw an angel sent into the sun uh, let's see uh, Verse 17, and I saw an angel standing in the sun, and he cried with a loud voice, saying to all the fowls that fly in the midst of heaven, Come and gather yourselves together up unto the supper of the great power. Because remember, there's going to be a lot of bloodshed, a lot of dead carcasses laying on the face of the ground. Like it says in Jeremiah, nobody shall bury them. That ye may eat the flesh of kings, and the flesh of captains, and the flesh of mighty men, and the flesh of horses, and of them that sit on them, sit, sit on them and the flesh of all men both free and bond, both small and great. And I saw the beast and the kings of the earth and their armies gathered together to make war against him that sat on the horse and against his army. So not only is they are going to Esau and his system, his militaries, these militaries are going to join together and they're going to fight Yahweh Shot, man. They are going to gather together and they're going to fight against Yahweh Shot, man. And the beast was taken and with him the false prophet, which is talking about the Vatican, and with that wrought miracles before him, which had to, which he deceived them with, that had to receive the mark of the beast, and them which worshipped his image. These both were cast alive into the lake of fire, burning with brimstone, because they're going to be a part. They're going to get destroyed with that nuclear fire, and the remnant were slain with the sword of him that sat on a horse, which sword proceeded out of his mouth, and all the fowls were filled with their flesh. So. Like it says in the book of um, Second Edges 13, that sword coming out of his mouth, which is talking the laser beams, man, coming out of the chariots. They're going to be consumed with fire, man. Not only is they going to get consumed by the fire from the chariots, they're also going to get consumed by the fire that's coming from the nuclear missiles, man. You know? So these are the judgments that the Heavenly Father is going to bring upon Babylon, ultimately upon Esau. Because that's who the main target of this destruction is for. That's who Yahweh Shah has in his crosshairs, if you know, if you will. Yahweh Shah has his eyes on Esau. He's coming to take Esau down. And we're we're encouraging it. We're we're um we're we're hoping for it, you know. Isaiah 63 and 1. Who is this that cometh from Edom with dyed garments from Basra, which is a capital city, which today the Basra will be America. America is Basra today. This is that is glorious in his apparel, traveling the greatness of his strength. I will Lord Yahweh coming to deliver Israelites, the elect of Israel, and to destroy Babylon. Um, and destroy Esau. I that speak righteous in righteousness, mighty to save. Remember, Yahweh comes in a volume of the book. Wherefore are thy red and thine apparel and thy garments like him that treadeth the wine fat? That's symbolic. Referring to all of the bloodshed that Yahweh is gonna you know do 
he's going to kill a lot of people. I have trodden the winepress alone, and of the people there was none with me. For I will tread them in mine anger, and trample them in my fury, and their blood shall be sprinkled upon my garments, and I will stain all my raiment. That is symbolic. Yahweh Shah is not going to literally get his clothes dirty. That means Yahweh Shah is going to kill a lot of people. That's what that means. And I looked and behold, there was none. With, um, I'm sorry, for verse four. For the day of vengeance is in mine heart and the year of my redeemed is come. So the day of vengeance is in Yahweh Shai's mind. He's thinking about that day that he's going to return. He's going to destroy Esau and his military and haul them off into slavery and establish Israel upon the face of the earth because it's the will of He's thinking about it because it's the will of the father. This is what the father wants him to do. He's doing the will of his father, just like he was when he was on the earth. He's doing fulfilling the prophecies because Yahweh Shai has a, it's a lot of prophecies about the day of the Lord that need to be fulfilled. And Yahweh Shai is coming to fulfill all of that. He know what he has to do and he's going to do it perfectly, just like he did it the first time when he was on the scene. He knows he has to take Esau down. He knows that he's going to shoot laser beams on these devils. He knows that he's going to shoot lasers out of the chariots. Out of, he knows that he's returning on the UFOs, man. Acts chapter, even the angels knew that. Acts chapter, Acts chapter 1 tells you that. The angels knew that Yahweh Shah was going to return like this, man. He's going to return with the chariots, the clouds. The, you know, symbolically saying the clouds. You know, it's not talking about literal clouds. It's talking about the UFOs. Revelations 1 and 7. Behold, he coming with clouds. Which is talking, this is John the Revelator. Because he's Yahweh Shai sold him a vision of him returning with the clouds on, on UFOs, man. Behold, he coming with clouds and every eye shall see him. So he's seen this. John the Revelator, he saw Yahweh Shai return in the angels with a hun hundreds of chariots. Probably thousands of chariots, man. So-called UFOs. And they also which pierced him and all kindreds of the earth shall well because of him. Even so, I'm on. So this is what... You know, I just want to do a quick lesson pointing out the similarities between the book of Joshua and how he conquered those Canaanite nations in order to receive the inheritance of the land in the same way, the same fashion. Well, um, you know, this in the same uh, plot, if you will, same idea is exactly how Yahweh Shai is going to do. You know, he's going, Yahweh Shai is coming to conquer these other nations and subdue them completely and put them into slavery that's where they're going and after a period of a thousand years edomites are going to be a completely done away with but they're going to be the only nation that's going to completely be destroyed but yeah joshua conquered and subdued the heathen nations the canaanite nations yahweh shai is coming to subdue esau and his uh, beast system and his the nato eu He's coming to consume everything that Esau has and take the power seat, you know, and establish the nation of Israel, just as how in, in the land of Israel, because but first that land has to be cleansed with nuclear missiles. So Yahweh Shai is coming to destroy Edom and these other nations that are in cahoots with him, just like Joshua did to those Canaanites. So that's the similarities. They both conquered the enemies, their nations, you know. And that's what Yahweh Shah coming to do. He's coming to conquer the nation. So with that, Lord willing, this lesson was edifying. Through, you know, Lord willing, Yahweh Rachel's out, this lesson was edifying. And I hopefully painted a beautiful picture of um, so you brothers and sisters can understand how Yahweh Shah is coming. So it's beautiful, Lord willing. But um, I'm going to close out by giving all praise and glory to the Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son, Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shah Bahashem, and Kakodash, that by honor to the apostles and the elders of the great midstone, that rule and teach well. Shalom.